Welcome, everybody, to the, what is it, the Wednesday edition of the Paranormal Portal? Wednesday? Wow. Wednesday, Don. It's Wednesday. And, of course, I'm not alone here, ladies and gentlemen. I am joined by my good friend and co-host, Mr. Don Longbeard. That'd be me again. Welcome the to Wednesday. In, the man in black. The in, bearded the, man in the black. Gray. The man in gray. <laughs> well, that's wisdom, Don. That's just, <laughs> that's just your wisdom hairs. <laughs> Those are your wow. window, wisdom hairs, so uh, wow, getting there you a go. a lot of credit on that one, aren't I? <laughs> PSPR Paranormal Pursuit, hello, how you doing? Great to see you, thanks for being here. Absolutely thrilled to see uh, any new faces. Uh, Don's, that's a new face, right? Yeah, as yeah. far as I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, nice to meet you. <laughs> Welcome to the show, and, and I'm, I apologize because I don't get a lot of chance to check the chat as the shows are going on, but I did see that, so it's great to see you, and uh, thank you for coming in here. Hi, Annette, Dawn's to you, to you too, and Lady, uh, Jim's in here, mm -hmm. uh, Pixie's in here, Sarah's in here. Yep, Hacker. Pack, ha huh? Hacker. Hacker? Rico. Oh, Hacksor. I was going Hacksor. Mm. Okay, uh, <laughs> MCAT's in here. Um, Danielle, Diana. Danielle, Diana. Uh -huh. Uh, I said Lena. Lewis is in here. Oh, there he is. Good to see you, Lewis. Uh, great. Welcome, everybody, to the show. I'm just going through. Uh, Regla is in here. Awesome to see you, Regla. And there's Omi. I, that's a new name to me. Omi? Omi. That sounds familiar. Where are you seeing Omi? Um, up here. Uh, are you way up in the list? Yeah, of course I am. Okay, I got to <laughs> gotta scroll up. Uh, well, everybody. Omi, Omi L N N no, Nalani. O Omi's been in here before. Has she? Yeah, Have yeah. They? Silux is in okay. here. Oh, well, there's Silux. Si. Silux, good to see you. Okay, I just want to give everybody a shout out because it always means the world to me that you guys are here. So thank mm -hmm. you guys for being here and being a part of the, of the amazing uh, family that is the Portal Chat. You guys are awesome. And if you didn't hear a shout out, just give us a yell out in the chat and we'll... Make sure to acknowledge you because it's a big part of the show. You guys are a huge part of the show. You guys are actually like the the, the other co-hosts. <laughs> I mean, really. The, well, the chat adds so much to the show. I mean, it, it, it's, uh, again, and, and I, uh, I hate being redundant, but I have to be redundant. I mean, it's, it's those other points of views, those other uh, ideas, those right, other, right. you know, um, 
visions of things that we didn't consider before. You guys have always added so much to the show. Dimension. As well as a lot of freaking humor. <laughs> <laughs> you, guys, you guys are amazingly witty, and, and uh, sometimes it's it's probably a good thing I don't read the chat, because if, <laughs> if I read them during the show, there's no way I'd be able to do a show. I'd be sitting here rolling. You guys are just hilarious. <laughs> so welcome to the show, and tonight we're going to do Shocking Tales of Ghostly Encounters, which just means ghost stories. And it, <laughs> it sounded really cool. <laughs> I try to be really creative with these titles because it's all about the title, ladies and gentlemen. It's all about the presentation, bringing people in, finding their interest. This is the, the worldwide interwebs. And uh, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, people out there doing the paranormal stuff. And some are doing it amazingly. And some of them are not doing it as well. And I hope that we're doing it at least uniquely. I don't think anybody's doing a portal other than us. Which is, <laughs> I don't know if anybody could do a portal. Out I don't of think so either. Sometimes it's part train wreck. Sometimes it's part, you know, heartfelt love and messages. And sometimes it's just part confusion. <laughs> sometimes it's part of our last Saturday. <laughs> what, what was last Saturday? The, the day we had the cr barreled cream. Oh, the barreled cream, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, that was. Uh, and they're sloshed. <laughs> <laughs> we did a drinking experiment here on the Paranormal Portal, but uh, our, our good friend Hexer sent us uh, uh, some barrel cream and homemade oh his own goodness, recipe, yeah, and it was amazing. It was just delicious. But that stuff, I'm just here to tell you, will kind of sneak up on you. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, tonight we're going to get into a show about ghosts and stuff. And um, now there's a lot of people, Don, that believe uh, this is the time the veil is thinnest, and this right. is something we've discussed before. Right. Um, there's like two different camps on this. Uh, there's the one camp that says no, you know, the Halloween, Soween, Samhain right. is the the thinnest of the veil, and then there's the other camp that says no, it's it's continuing to thin all the way down until the winter solstice, right. where whereas then it's it begins getting thicker, and it, and it's uh, t the interesting part to me again is the the correlation between the thinness of the veil. And the shortness of the days, right? You well, know, it makes sense. Yeah, you know that is it, is it does it have something to do with the light? That the longer the light. Well, right. Is sunlight the just the is it just a, a, a illumination oh. of things, or is there a spiritual aspect or to the is sun? There, is it or is it a wall to the right? That's what I'm saying. Wall, right? The the presence. That's an interesting idea. Right. That's where yeah. I was going with this this whole time. I'm glad you caught up. <laughs> I had to run. I may have run backwards, <laughs> but I made it. <laughs> you got a huge microphone shadow on your face, though. By oh, the way. that sucks. No, there well, you I'm go. Trying, I'm trying better. to make sure that the, the microphone's in my, my face. Yeah, no, usually that's it's good. over here. <laughs> right, I understand. And so, it is good to hear you, but it's ah, just, you just had this big... <laughs> it's nice to be heard. <laughs> and I'm going with the glasses tonight, ladies and gentlemen, because, uh, you know, I'm squinting so much, so I'm, I'm going to try the glasses tonight. I have, I have weird eyesight. It's like... Right in between. This computer screen is kind of right in between where I need them and where I don't, mm -hmm. you know. So I'm like in that, in that really close spot. So I'm going to try the glasses tonight. I hope you guys don't mind. I hope they look okay. But uh, I do wear glasses mostly just for driving. I don't usually wear them other than that. But right. um, reading the messages on some of these, on some of these stories is, is pretty, pretty harsh sometimes. So let's get into some of these, ladies and gentlemen. And I hope you guys enjoy it. But Don, how you been? By the way, I'm sorry, I didn't even been really good. give you any you know, time. Um, you know, I was I was present for the uh, Christmas Eve show. Oh, good. I think I was on my second bottle of elderberry wine and mead. It was uh, it was a warm night. <laughs> yeah, but it was. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I was there, um, and uh, I absolutely enjoyed it. And it's nice actually getting to actually listen to a full. You know, episode of the bedtime stories. How, how did I do, by the way? <laughs> I don't remember. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was on my second or third yeah. bottle. <laughs> okay, gotcha. Well, I'm glad you were able to be here, and and I did see that you were here. I just, you know, yes. again, I don't have a chance to look at the chat, but well, I try to pop in, you know, every night, you know, yeah. but I'm usually at work, so it's sure. like I'm I'm playing hooky from you know, <laughs> your my responsibilities. Duties. Yeah, <laughs> no, that's a, that's understandable, but it is cool when you check in, and then, of course, we all miss you when you're not here. Aww, so it's you. good to see you here, and thanks for being here tonight. Oh, of course, yeah, yeah. But no, my Christmas was good. Good. Um, uh, made roast duck. Oh, uh, well uh, played. Extra, extra cheesy garlicky mashed potatoes and roasted carrots and and onions, and that's pretty much what I had for dinner, and it was pretty freaking excellent. That sounds pretty excellent. And then we had ice cream. 
and that homemade toffee that I stole from our friend Danielle. I stole Ooh, it all. Nice <laughs> and job. chocolate chips. Uh huh. And uh-huh. whipped cream right on top. Plop. Wow, that was definitely not the diet. Uh, God, that was so good. <laughs> so this uh, is your diet plan, is what we're. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, fat guy. Yeah. <laughs> I know. See food, eat food. Yeah, yeah. you know. Yeah. I got gotcha. you. So, uh, well, again, uh, and I'm glad you had a nice holiday. So. Oh yeah, yeah, that was nice too. Yeah, I just kind of sat around. It was a quiet night or quiet good. day. It was nice. You needed one of those days. Yes, I actually, I actually saw the movie. Finally, saw the movie Passenger. Oh. It's uh, it's uh, Chris Pratt and Jennifer Lawrence, and they're off on their way to. Oh right, right. Um, yeah, and, they're like spaceship. Yeah. Yeah, but it wasn't what I thought it'd be. It was definitely a. a it was a, a space chick flick. <laughs> uh, so it was like space, uh, space it twilight. Was a, it was a, yeah, it was a love story <laughs> in space. Um, okay. But it was still a pretty good movie. It was a pretty good movie. I was pretty pleased with it actually. Oh good, so, good. Yeah. I so, actually watched a movie last night, The Ready Player One. Oh, what what was that? Now I've been. That's like that. the VR. You know, it's the the whole world just sucks, so everybody goes to VR world. Oh, and then like there's surrogate. This, right, and there's a the guy who invented the VR world has died, but he let, had a contest that if anybody can find the three secret he, keys hidden oh. in, hidden throughout this whole VR realm, they, would they be will there. become incredibly wealthy and gain control of this VR realm. Wow! But there's this mega corporation that's competing. To try to get those keys because they want to control it and throw <laughs> throw adver- advertisements of all over course, it, yeah. you know, make it a big billboard. Being um, like fake book, being you know just <laughs> no, the normal kind of uh, 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 what do you call it, corporate douches, you know mm-hmm. that kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, cool. but uh, it was a good good show. I mean, they did a good job putting it together, and there's a lot of <laughs> there's a lot of nods to many different uh, video game and and popular. Uh, popular uh, culture things like the iron right. giant is right. in there and oh so, really yeah it's really cool huh. so it was a fun movie just to, you know it's a fun movie so anyway all right let's get into these stories ladies and gentlemen uh, enough of us just being fluffy and cute here <laughs> <laughs> we got the fluffy down we're just working on that, cute <laughs> that's a hard job too oh, my goodness i gotta all study right. for that one i know there's no test believe me <laughs> All right, so I guess the test is to look at the the viewing numbers. (laughs) Why are they going down? (laughs) I don't understand. All right, a few months ago, I had a dream where I felt like there was a presence in my room. It was so real. In the dream, I felt like there was an angel at the right foot of my bed and roaring sound. Hmm. Also, a presence on top of me that felt like it was a devil. It was scary, and when I hear, when I hear a clear word, I could make out from the corner uh, of where the roar sound was. I heard jewel. I am jewel. I awoke frightened. After examining this dream and talking about it, I felt jewel was my guardian angel, helping me to wake up from the fear of the presence on my. Uh, on my comfort or comforter <laughs> it's like comfort and then or, or. <laughs> comfort or um <laughs> i had someone suggest that jewel was an ancestor trying to get in touch with me here is the dream below <laughs> and it's all it's all totally organized angelic dream number one and then they give the date and five fifteen a.m tony got up for work i got up with him and after he left i went back to bed and pulled up the comforter up to my neck and I started contemplating if I should go back to sleep or just get up for the day. I started to fall into a half-awake, half-asleep kind of feeling, and I knew I was dreaming at this point and felt a presence in my room. In my mind, I was thinking of an angel in my dream, and I started to feel pressure on top of the comforter and at the bottom of the bed on my feet, and it started working its way up my legs with heavy pressure. I heard a whirling sound, at the end of the right foot of my bed, and I was scared. I remember hollering, Shauna. I don't know what Shauna is, but anyway. Uh, The pressure got heavier and moving up my body towards me. I was getting more scared and heard words coming out of the whirling sound, and it was Jewel, or I am Jewel. I yelled out loud in my sleep, No, and woke up. I got up for the day and too scared to fall back to sleep, and I went to work telling Renette we were freaking out and I came home that evening still intrigued by the dream I got up and I got online and began to research angels jewel etc 
I came across a bunch of angelic websites, and I dove in and began reading for an hour. I came to a paragraph that read, that read at, and, and it's ask angel, askanangel.org. Okay. There is a jewel nature to your soul, the jewel of your soul. The quality, the nature, the shape, the tones, the colors, the very vibration, the very emanations of this jewel reflect your, your soul nature and the gifts in this lifetime you have chosen to embody. We amplify the jewel nature of your soul, and we amplify the highest, purest, truest emanations of your soul, which are in alignment with creator and with creation. We amplify your ability to connect with the gifts that you carry within you. We work with you to open you... Uh, anyway, blah, 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 it's all fluffy. Um, yeah, you know, I don't want to read their whole... The, my conclusion to this dream, the, I'm sorry. It's, there you go. It's just like, you know, I can, I can handle so much of that, and that's, it's wonderful, it's beautiful, but it just gets so fluffy. Um, I'm, I guess that's the word tonight, fluffy, right? Yes. It's coming up all the time. Um, my conclusion to the dream, though, through my soul searching, I've questioned a few times if we should expand the shop or should sell out and move with Tony to the hill country. I feel that this was an answer to follow with the expansion that the gifts given to me are the jewel of my nature of soul. The creativity is the God-given gift and meant for me to share it through my business. Also, I am in the Word and hungering for the knowledge of, of Jesus and growing in Christ. I feel like Satan could have the presence on the comforter, could have been the presence on the comforter, and my guardian angel was the whirring, whirling wind who spoke to me jewel to wake me up from the dream this may sound crazy but it happened it happened to me so until you walk in my shoes think what you want and then she's got another dream and then another one okay all right we're gonna go through the next one this one's kind of a this is an odd story but it was right the right before tony had to get up and go to for work and one of my lifelong fears has been always been something under my bed I'm, I still, at 35, run and jump into the bed at night. Tony cracks me up. Well, in this dream, it began like this. I was laying on my back. I felt the comforter on my right leg flip over to the left, leaving my leg exposed. I then started sliding down the side of the bed in slow motion, being pulled to the ground right next to the bed. Pulled, pulled to my fear. It says pulled to my fear. I wonder if he means pulled by my feet. Um, I was reaching towards Tony, who was still asleeping, and started to try and call his name. And when I started to holler, Tony, I could feel the voice in my gut coming out, of, uh, coming out of my mouth, and it sounded and felt like a deep devil voice. Tony turned and looked at me, but it wasn't Tony. He had a really scary face, brown, yellow, protruding front teeth, evil eyes. He pulled me up uh, the bed with him, next to him, and turned... And put his tongue in my mouth. <laughs> That's oh, terrible. Well. Wow. This is a little saucy. <laughs> it was not Tony's tongue. <laughs> <laughs> she knows the difference. Yeah, well, that's good. That's love right there. <laughs> uh, it was like a thin, wiggly snake. Oh, God. <laughs> I, I woke up freaking out, and I just snuggled next to Tony and started to fall back asleep. I started dreaming the same dream again. The cover flipped off my leg. At this point, I knew in my dream it was happening again. So I began to holler, only it sounded like mumbling to Tony. And thank goodness he heard me because he yelled, Shana, <laughs> you're talking out of your head. <laughs> the sound of his voice brought instant comfort to me, and I woke up and stayed up. Tony kept picking, me, picking at me that day, talking to me with that devil voice. He is a hoot. <laughs> He's a hoot. It's like he's a jerk. <laughs> Once again, it happened. Sounds crazy, I know. It was a dream, but truly weird. And uh, then this person put an update in here. I can't believe I didn't submit this first. My angelic dreams devilish presence began soon after my grandfather's death on Labor Day weekend. Oh. Um, uh, it's took a, they took a photo, but it's basically, uh, and not to, not to belittle or demean it, but it's just basically a cloudy sky with the sunbeams coming through. So I'm not going to waste the time to put that up on the screen. Right. Um, <laughs> like, what is that it was sound? A worry noise. Yeah. Just, to, yeah, I thought I was going to get your tongue in my ear or something. <laughs> <Jewel>. <laughs> it's like, yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> Dan goes full creepy. <laughs> I'm trying something new. <laughs> okay, well, good luck with all that. <laughs> so basically, they're correlating this with the, the grandfather's death and stuff. And, and I don't know. I don't know that that has, would have to have anything to do with it. I think right. uh, here's the thing. I've, I've actually had some really incredibly religious confrontational dreams in my in, in my life right um they 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 are incredibly l- vivid and incredibly l- lucid but when i'm talking in them it's like i already know all the right answers and it just comes out of my mouth it's really cool because i don't really have to defend myself because what i'm saying chases them away huh. these dark things but do i think that they're actually spiritual experiences Maybe, but I don't know. It's it's one of those things that it's really hard to tell. It's hard to know if you're if you're having an actual religious spiritual experience or if you're just processing some kind of you know some kind of dogmatic thing in your mind. I don't know, and I don't mean to degrade anybody. There, you know, if they've had beautiful religious experiences, I think that's incredibly powerful. I'm just not sure that what I experienced was. Uh, an actual confrontation with really dark, evil things in my dreams. Now, I have con- you know, dealt with really dark, evil things in my wake, and that's a whole different thing. And maybe this is a correlation to you know the, the entire journey was also in my dream state as well as my wake state. Right, I don't right. know. But uh, yeah. I'm here to tell you that uh, you know, it's, you know, they are really powerful dreams, and it could very well be. There could very well be a, a whole distinct reality to dreams and 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 perhaps perhaps that's more real than the world we live in you know maybe that's more like the real truth right. of things than this illusion that we wake to every day well you know i mean you're you're obviously when you're asleep you know your subconscious takes over uh-huh. you know and so maybe it releases these thoughts or ideas that you can't manifest during your waking hours because your consciousness has taken over mm-hmm. Um, so maybe it gives it more of a, t- a chance to connect with um, a spirit or spiritual realm or or mm-hmm. something like that. So, right. I mean, you know, why not consider that, you know? Well, sure. And I don't discount it completely. It's just, you know, we've got to remember, though, the dreams are also... It can be just the most ridiculous, <laughs> stupid things ever. Trust you know? me, I know. Yeah. Well, yeah, well, <laughs> well, you got a whole bunch of weird shit going. Our stuff. Sorry. <laughs> what I, are you trying to say? My alien hand syndrome's <laughs> too not good enough for you. Don, you got my Doctor Strange. You got a cast Mr. member from the Adams <laughs> family in your bed with you. Wow, that's horrible. <laughs> Settle down, thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I, you know, it's just, I, it's hard to say. <laughs> yeah, it truly really is. Oh, I know. I said it, didn't I? Can <laughs> it came out? I couldn't even stop it. <laughs> it just flowed right it, out. It just spilled out. The, the filter was temporarily <laughs> removed. It was because I thought about Don's hand, and it just, it was just gone. It switched my filter to off. <laughs> Don's oh, alien awesome. hand turned off my filter. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just like, I don't know, you've got some of those bizarre things going on in your world, dude. <laughs> For a guy that's a skeptic, that's the part that kills me. It's like, you are more paranormal than most 10 things. <laughs> uh, oh, you really no. are. Wow. I mean, you've got your own unique take on reality. That's, that's all I can tell there's you. There's a definite truth. <laughs> But, uh, you know, I mean, yeah, I mean, is it, and, hey, Gemini. and, plus, and be, be, plus, you know, we always talk about like 3 a.m. being the witching hour or, mm-hmm. you know, anytime after you know, like 1201, whatever. Right. But, you know, most normal people, quote unquote, uh-huh. um, air quotes, I should say, um, you know, are, are well asleep by then. And, you know, that's the that's the thinnest of the veil in a in a in a manner of speaking. So I wonder if. If that's the thing is if we weren't because people who don't sleep through those times uh-huh. generally don't um, don't function well. You know, there's there's the sleepless elite that can you know work on five hours or less, you know, which mm-hmm. I, th- I think I'm kind of that that <laughs> way. You could be the sleepless part anyway. <laughs> but I mean, you know, I mean, but think about it, you know, people people report all these things happening you know, between this time and that when right. and I was asleep and I was, 
I was dreaming and this, that, and the other. Right. You know, but then again, we were just talking about the thinning of the veil. The veil is thinnest in the darkest times. Right. It, well, it possibly, it? possibly. Yeah. I mean, you know, so, there's definitely seems to be. But a I mean, you know, correlation that, to that. At that time, that's the darkest of the night. You know, that's when every you know three o'clock, four o'clock in the morning is the best time to sleep. Trust me, I know. Well, sure. You know, Sacramento so, Paranormal Investigators. Hello. Hey. Good to see you. Um, but you know, so that's what I'm thinking is you know maybe it's because at that time at night your dreams are open, you're open to mm-hmm. your subconscious, you can be contacted. You know, you can whatever. be. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, it's just uh, uh, maybe they chip Don's hand. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's just strap that baby down before bed. Just to... <laughs> but um, <laughs> but I mean, you know, maybe that's the correlation between dreams and, and this kind of thing is is the thinning of the veil. The nighttime each every every night, the veil three o'clock, you know, 12, 15 or, or well, that's the other thing of it. That's it. So. And that's a good point. So we, we understand that there's a thinning of the veil as far as the calendar year goes. Right. But is there a thinning of the veil as far as the day cycle goes? Right. Or, you know, and, and quite honestly, there isn't, uh, although it, it gets dramatized a lot more, there isn't really a correlation between paranormal activity and day or night. I mean, paranormal activity happens when it happens. Right. There's plenty of things that I've experienced during the day and plenty of things that uh, paranormal researchers experience during the light time. But I think it's the night that just makes it more unnerving. I don't know. But, or is it? I mean, maybe it is actually more active than, because I know paranormal investigators usually get some of the best evidence between 3 and 4 a.m. is what I've heard. Um, I, I, I'm only going by what I've heard. So ladies and gentlemen, if I'm, if I'm mistaken, I do apologize, but I've truly heard that claim. Sacramento paranormal investigator says spirits can communicate with you much easier when you're asleep because your Uh mind is open. Very good. Good Good point. Boiling. Yeah. Boiling it down. Right. And the, and there is that is, is that also in the night, are we more receptive to experiencing things, not only in the sleep state, but just in our, uh, um, in our relaxed state, you know, right, like we're, right. we're more relaxed at night. We're not dealing with phone calls and, and, you know, running around kids and, <laughs> Listening to you know, loss. appointments <laughs> and, you know, God only knows the kind of things people have to face in their daytime. Right. So they're, you know, they're working in this, such a state of hysteria. Right. So when they get to that point where they're just kind of like, Hey, I'm just sitting here, just relaxing, watching TV. I'm not thinking about all that other crap. And then you know, is that when people are more receptive? So in other words, the events are ongoing right. with the paranormal. Right. It's just, it's hard to get through those personal filters. Yeah, because the, p- cause the filters are down. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. And I think there's, I think there might be something to that as well. But again, it's all theories. Uh, you know, unfortunately, there's, there's, it's really tough to correlate that kind of thing with, with any kind of, you know, um, any kind of certainty. But I think it's a, it's a valid hypothesis anyway. Right. I think so. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> right then. <laughs> yes. Um, Sarah, there's no pee breaks on Wednesday nights. Oh, yeah. yeah. Nope. <laughs> if you got to go, you got to get up and go, sister. <laughs> you just take care of that business, girl. You just, you just let us know when you're back. That's okay. <laughs> That's all we need to know. That's right. Yeah, we don't we don't do breaks. Just on a BRB on would Wednesday. be great. Thank no. you, <laughs> regular says. A BRB, yeah. Be right back. Yeah, see you. <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, we do the breaks on Friday, Saturday, but but it's only because we have to. Right. On Friday, Saturday, the show is, of course, tied to the network, TFRlive.com, iHeartRadio, tune in and talk stream live. And so we have to take scheduled breaks on those nights, and so that's why we have those those break sequences here on YouTube when we're doing the simulcast feed. But on, you know, the other nights, like the bedtime stories uh, every other night and then our Wednesday night here tonight. No breaks. It's just a dead run. It's yeah. just a straight out. No, we Let's have. Go. If, you know, the <laughs> there is the host clause, though. So <laughs> That's true. <laughs> if the host has to go, then there's a break. <laughs> and we have exercised that before. We have, we have exercised the host clause from time to time, but... I try to drink responsibly before every show because you just, you know, I, I'd hate to. <laughs> just suck it up, buttercup. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We're making this run. <laughs> we're we're going to do it. Got so. a long way to go and a show time to get there. <laughs> <laughs> you ever sing solo? <laughs> <laughs> solo, no one can hear you. Can I'm you just... follow me here? Never mind. <laughs> that sounds wonderful. That's that's how I sing. <laughs> Don sings in tongues. When geeks are All right. 
He's almost spitting over there. <laughs> we might kill him. We might actually kill him tonight. <laughs> oh, my goodness. That's okay, Don. Oh. Try well, not to uh, breathe as you're drinking. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, okay. Are right. y'all better now? I'm oh, feeling better. better. Did you got better? <laughs> all right. She turned me into a newt. <laughs> <laughs> well, I got better. <laughs> <laughs> that was a classic. Oh, it was excellent. Excellent show, I tell you. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, the next story I'm going to read to you is a, a little quick one, but I think it'll be good. One Saturday night, I was babysitting this child, and I told him it was time to go to bed and put him in his room. As soon as I placed him on the bed, he started bawling. So I said, I'll stay here until you fall asleep. He wouldn't stop talking. Then he just stopped and stared at the window. He started crying, and I got this freaky feeling like somebody was watching us through the window. Just as scared as he was, I told him he can sleep in the living room with me, <laughs> with the TV on. We were watching Full House, and someone started knocking on the kitchen door. It was like 10 p.m., and I guessed it was his parents, and I thought that this was the, the end of a freaky night, but then I stopped walking. I never saw the headlights coming into the driveway or heard the car. I looked out a peephole, and nobody was there. The little boy started crying again, and I called his parents, and they said they were going to be home in a half of an hour. Relieved that it was almost over, someone started tapping on the window. Mm -hmm. The little boy started crying even harder, trying to be the adult and not be scared, but it was really hard. And as I s soothed him down, I told him Mommy and Daddy would be home soon. Well, his parents arrived, and they paid me. I walked outside to the car, and I noticed something moving. Uh -oh. I'm not sure what it was, but I'm pretty sure <coughs> I looked over, and I saw a man laughing at me. Then he just turned around and walked away. This was one of the scariest nights of my life. One month later, the family moved out. Huh. They said that they had been seeing this man, and they said the man was always laughing at them. Wow. Creepy. Holy creepy. <laughs> wow. Wow. That's terrible. That's Don't terrible. Don't sleep. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this one sounds, this one sounds kind of good. I think I should pull this one up. Uh, I don't know. Let me look at it. I didn't open it up before, but it's not too long. I guess we can read this. Right. <laughs> what the name of that the i know that's story. why that's why i was like hey maybe i should read this and i'm not gonna read the title because it's not important but it's that's just kind of funny all right when i was 17 years old i babysat a lot and i can vividly remember this one experience i had while babysitting this sounds extremely cliche but it was a dark and stormy night <laughs> yeah that i think that's been done yeah um, I was watching this little girl named Sioban, and she was a sweet little girl, and her parents were supposed to be back well after midnight. So Sioban and I just sat and we watched television and played games and typical activities for when you're babysitting, and one of Sioban's friends came over to play, and since it was raining outside and it was really cold and it was also dark, we wound up playing hide-and-seek. Since I was the oldest and it was my duty to seek them first, so... I counted to 20 while they went to hide, and keep in mind, these are two little girls who couldn't keep from snickering and laughing, so they always gave away where they were uh, pretty quickly. After I was done counting, I saw the door at the end of the hall moving like there was someone behind it. I automatically assumed that that was where the two girls were hiding, so I walked down the hall and I made a show of it saying, gee, I wonder where they are. I figured I had wasted enough time pretending to look for them, and well, I already knew where they were behind the door that kept moving, so I walked quietly over to the door, and I stepped into the room and looked behind it, and I said, gotcha. I was completely taken aback when I saw that there was nobody there, and the laughter I had been hearing wasn't coming from the two girls because the two girls decided to, pull, to hide on the opposite side of the house. I quickly found the girls and I told them that playtime was over and that we were just going to sit and watch TV and Sioban friend had to go home a half hour later. So after her friend left, it was just Sioban and I in the house alone. I decided it was time for Sioban to go to bed because 
it was already way past her bedtime, so I put her to bed, and, and I went in the living room to study for a test. I kept hearing what sounded like a door open, and I thought Siobhan was trying to come, come out to get a glass of water or to say she couldn't sleep. I was waiting for the typical excuse from a kid, but every time I checked on her, she was sound asleep. So anything I was hearing was, wasn't coming from her. She wasn't the cause. Her parents finally got home a little after midnight, and when her dad was driving me home, I told him what had been happening and what I had experienced, and he said he had experienced the same thing hmm. and that he had purposely not told me anything to see if my experience would be the same as his. That's kind of creepy of him. <laughs> You are test subject A. (laughs) (laughs) Subject seven, step forward. (laughs) You don't want to know what happened to the first six. (laughs) I can honestly say that this was the creepiest and most scared I have ever been. Wow. Creepy. Wow. I think that's creepy that the dad would not say something and then act like he was doing some grand experiment at this kid's (laughs) expense. I was just waiting to see what you experienced. Wow. <laughs> that is horrible. Wow. I mean, you know, if you need a babysitter, you need a babysitter, but, you know, maybe <laughs> leave some Bibles and holy water around or something. <laughs> yeah. Holy water and yeah. a spray bottle. Yeah. <laughs> a little vinegar in there for the cat. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> wow. That's, 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 uh, that's creepy. <laughs> Check this out. So the one about the tapping on the glass, Jim sent us that. Says, don't tap on the glass, Kenny. It traumatizes them. (laughs) 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 Jim, Jim would have a meme for it. (laughs) He's probably got like two terabytes of memes in his his hard drive. He's probably got it on an external, so it can't be searched (laughs) remotely. (laughs) Oh my god. Oh wow, that's crazy. Yeah. God, we could do a whole show on babysitting stories. God, I think not. that'll be next the next story time. I know what you did the other day. <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> I saw your boyfriend there. <laughs> not those kind of ghost stories. Oh, There's, not those. Not, ones. not those babysitting stories. <laughs> yeah, the first, the first, the first girl who screams around out the door dies. <laughs> you know, it's, yeah, that's like every other you know typical horror movie. <laughs> sure. Well, yeah. Go hide in the oh, basement. There's, a, there's, a, there's another horror movie coming out called The Bird Box. It's got Sandra Bullock in it. A mainstream, I should say. Mainstream horror movie. Right, right. So it, it, it was... I think I saw something about that. And, and, you know, I just don't get into those kind of movies. And you'd think I would because, you know, I'm into the paranormal and all that. But I don't know. It's just... Eesh. I don't know. <laughs> maybe, honestly, maybe it comes from... Having worked in corrections, to be honest with you, right? Yeah, I do understand. That, I, I that, just, yeah. I just don't. I, you know, I've I've worked around some really twisted people and some really really broken people and some wonderful people too. Don't get me wrong. There was there was definitely bright days doing it too, but when when you're around that kind of darkness, mm-hmm. you know, it's just hard hard for me personally to go to a theater and watch a. a a dramatization of some of the things that I knew people had done. Well, you know, and, and worked around them. That was something that a friend of mine a long time ago and I were talking about, because you know, I, I my degrees in law enforcement. I've worked in the the DOC as well, you know. And so we were talking one day, and it's like, what about the Tom Harris books? You know, the the Hannibal Lecter and the 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 Red Dragon books and all that. And it's like, you know, somebody thought about. That kind of thing, right? Well, so there were a lot of them are based on you know yeah, actual cases. Well, yeah, but I mean, and I don't mean to imply that people in corrections are twisted. You know, I, I really don't. <laughs> for the record, are. but you know, I'm serious. I met some of the most amazing people as well. But mm-hmm. th- there were some really, really broken people. There were some scarily broken people in right. there. Right. Oh yeah. Oh. And you know that that had files that they would they would. If they hit a trigger, they would just as soon stab well, you as look at you. I, I mean, you know, it's just that easy. I, we've talked about me meeting um, Kevin Cohen, um, 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 Kevin Bianchi, right? The Hillside Strangler from uh, from uh, uh, San Francisco, I believe it was. We, Kevin Bianchi. We might have. I, and I've I've talked to them, and they're scary individuals. Right. Now, yeah, I mean, having, seriously, though, and I, and I know this isn't necessarily paranormal, but it kind of is because... Yeah. Well, I, you know, I've worked around murderers and, um, there's something, 
I, I don't know what to say, but being an empathic person, oh, it's hard. there's something, there's like a hole right through them, and right. I don't know how else to say it. There's like some some something so broken and gaping in them that can never be filled. It was, uh, you know, and and as as silly as it sounds, you know, the whole Horcrux idea, you know, with right. breaking your soul, right. Right. and they do it through murder. I mean, it makes sense to me in at least a rudimentary way because... You know, those people, there's something just missing. Yeah. No. You know, and not all of them, you know. I mean, again, there's some amazing people that I've met as well. And, uh, you know, some, <laughs> it's just one of those things. So it's hard for me to watch horror movies just because, you know, of that experience. I think for me that was tough. Right. But, you sure. know, sure. You, you do what you do. You, do, you get what you get. And, you know, yeah, yeah. But, you know, I, I and again, it was some of the most amazing times too because, I saw some really damaged people really pull their lives together and do amazing things. And that to me is the biggest, ah. you know, victory, honestly. Sure. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, because, you know, a lot of times people think that that's, that's the throwaways and it's really cool when people prove them wrong. Right. You know, right. And, and go on to do amazing things with their lives. So right. they just need that, um, redirection. Right. Exactly. Yeah. In most cases, in Instead many, Instead of becoming a recidivist. Right. In many cases, it, it was really, you know, a lot, a lot of people were broken because of, of growing up broken, yes. you know, and that's a tough place. I mean, how can you, how can you expect anybody to not be broken if they grew up just horribly shattered and broken? So it's tough, but, right. you know, again, it's all about the person. I've seen, I've seen people that everybody had given up on go and do amazing things. And I saw people that should have done amazing things, throw it all the way in, in yep. you know, yep. Yep. do horrible things so yep. it's all about the person not that this is uh, what the show's about but it's interesting yeah but you know i i do believe there's a paranormal there could very well be a paranormal um um, um god the word went right out of my head huh um a paranormal <clears throat> whatever <laughs> aspect aspect sure yeah that okay. works yeah okay all right let's continue on when i was about 12 i went and visited my dad who lived in washington mm. right next door to us don yep at the time and we went to visit this fort and forgive me for forgetting the name but we went into the fort and my dad stepmom and grandparents and i all went into one of the fort's rooms and after all my family left the room, I heard a noise, like rocks moving on the ground. And I got scared and, and ran to tell my family. The next room we went into had this big metal door with one of those big round knockers on it. After my family left the room, I heard the knocker slam into the big door. Again, I ran out of the room and caught up with the rest of the family. <laughs> Notice a pattern here? <laughs> Seems to be targeting this kid. The ghost must have wanted to make sure I knew that they were there. Later on, we went to the top of the fort. My dad and grandpa wanted to go into the fort when they saw these stairways going down, and I told them I did not want to go down there because I did not like the feel of it. So they, were, they went on without me, and I waited for about five minutes and called to my dad to see if he was still there, and a second later, I heard my father's and grandfather's voice reply to me saying, Come on, come on down. Come on down, Mindy. So I went down the stairs and into the room, and when I got there, there was nobody there. I went out of the room and saw my father and grandfather on the other side of the fort. I went to them and asked them if they told me to come down the stairs, and they told me that they didn't and that they had been walking around the fort, and that is when I knew that there were really were ghosts at that fort. Mm -hmm, <laughs> mm -hmm. So they called her down there. Oh, that's that's just naughty. That's just mean. Poor kid. Huh. Nothing too spooky, though. That's just, uh, you know, having some experiences. Yeah, definitely. Having some experiences. So let's see where we at. 746. The night is moving along nicely. It's a nice relaxed pace tonight, isn't yes, it? Yes, it's nice. Feels good after that holiday rush. It's I like, know, uh, huh? It's like just building up to that is like just everything's running, 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 and now it's like oh. I know it's like oh, the gosh. It's like it's like the Fourth of July. It's all this anticipation. Okay, let's go home. Yeah, he's <laughs> you just... know, it's just it's like it's, okay, it's done. All right, let's go home. <laughs> I don't know how else to explain it. It's just this 
ending, and then it's just done. <laughs> I, does that even make sense? Yes, I don't know. <laughs> I'm just going to keep it clean. Okay, yes. Oh, no. <laughs> just you saying that, uh, I, I knew. When I was younger, my family and I used to live in an apartment in El Paso. And every night, my little sister would go into the corners and talk to a guy named Bob. She told us Bob used to live here, but I thought it was just her imagination. Then really really late at night, I heard voices. My little sister was sitting by the closet talking to a man. At least, that's how the voice seemed like, and it was so creepy that I just left the light on every night until the fear just went away. A couple of days later, <clears throat> excuse me, my parents kept on seeing the shadow of a man in the hall. Then at 3 o'clock in the morning, Don, 3 o'clock in the morning, there it is. we heard knocking on the front door. My dad decided to stay up and see who was knocking on the door. We heard knocking on the door, but nobody was there. It was scary since we didn't know who or what was doing the banging. Mm-hmm. It was also getting worse with my sister talking to Bob and with the banging. My parents just decided to move, and we got a new house, and I don't know who lives there now. I'm just really glad <laughs> that we left. I really don't like it that my sister named a huge teddy bear Bob. <laughs> she named her teddy bear Bob now. Uh-oh, Bob could be in the bear. Right, Don? Bob the teddy bear. Bob the bear. Wow. Build a bear, <laughs> build a bear workshop. <laughs> Comes with free haunting. <laughs> <laughs> Comes with free attachments. Yeah, you not only you not only sew the heart in there, you just cast a little spell and. It's not just the heart; it's an <laughs> Abbey Normal heart. <laughs> yeah, that's what, Abbey Normal, <laughs> Young Frankenstein. <laughs> I just watched that clip not too long ago. It was, somebody had a meme of it or a, a little clip of it. I thought that was hilarious. <laughs> I don't know some girl named Abby yeah, Normal. <laughs> Oh, funny. Did the jar say abnormal on it? <laughs> Marty Feldman yeah, had that those was strange <laughs> eyes. Oh, my God. That guy could totally look two directions. <laughs> um, wow. <laughs> so this one's a quick one. This one's, uh, to tell this story, I have to begin by saying ghosts are very real. That's a good thing if you're submitting a ghost story. <laughs> yeah. It's a good conclusion to come to. And in my home, there is the spirit of a little boy, mm-hmm. and at night you can hear him walking around the house, making noises, playing with my little sister's toys, and when trying to sleep, he would start to shake my bed. This has happened many times before, and I have a night light in my room for when my nephew sleeps over, and one night, the night lights up the whole room, and I just laid in bed. For a quick second, the room went absolutely pitch black. I thought it might have just been my eyes adjusting to the dark, but... Then all of a sudden, with such slow creepiness, very, very slowly, the room went black, as if someone was covering the light. I was the only one in the room, and I ran out of the room, and I have pictures of this ghost. My sister and mother have seen this little boy. He's a very white, pale ghost color. Mm. I've spoken with him on our Ouija board. In my home, he's 12 years old and died in the early 80s. Between things moving around and whistling at night to my bed shaking, there are ghosts. <laughs> well, that's... that's Apparently so. <laughs> that kind of sums it up. <laughs> they they uh, are ghosts. There are ghosts. Uh, to be 12 in the 80s again. Yeah, <laughs> right? Uh, We'd end up in Stranger Things. <laughs> <laughs> Don, we were the strange things. <laughs> that is no doubt. <laughs> we were the stranger things. I, I don't remember wow. much of the 80s. Yeah, no, I, I actually kind of do. <laughs> well, do you? Okay. Yeah, it was a good time. Oh, okay. Yeah, it was, was a good time. No, I had a lot of fun in the 80s. It was a good, a good uh, decade for sure. Before things got all really wacky. Yes. <laughs> but, and Pixie says if we'd be the Demogorgon. <laughs> <laughs> Demogorgon, yeah. Awesome. <laughs> you watched that, right? Stranger Things? I, I watched the first uh, season, and I got uh, a few into the second season, and okay. that's pretty much where I left it. So, Oh, you haven't watched all of it? No, I can't. Oh. I can't. The second one, the second season dried up for me, I guess, is the only thing I can what? say. What? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Well, and then, and then Lost in Space. That was such a disappointment. Really? Yes. You didn't like that? No. 
What? Oh, it was so not the story. Well, the story sucked on the original show. This is much better telling of it. <sighs> I'm just curious what happens now is all I'm going to say. I just, I, I wonder why, <laughs> never mind. That'll make me sound like a horrible person, but oh, <clears throat> yes, yeah, okay, yeah, all right. But I, I like the Lost in Space reboot. I thought they did a phenomenal job. Very cool. In fact, I, I loved it way, way more than the original back in the day. Hmm. Okay, we're getting back to a Christmas story. So, little bit of Christmas love just for you guys. Hi. <laughs> wow. Well. It starts out with hi. All right. This is another one of my other story. Um, I was in my room being bored, so I decided to read. And I was laying on my bed, and, uh, and the house I live in is new. Nobody else has ever lived in it. And I was laying there, reading my legs with my legs up and my book resting on them, and I had this feeling that something just told me to look in the doorway. Well, I did, and I saw this white figure just sa- standing there looking at me, and I was absolutely terrified. I closed my eyes for a couple of minutes and decided to open them, and it was still there, just like a couple of seconds. And when I opened my eyes, the figure just walked to the right of him or her into either the bathroom or my little sister's room, and I never saw it again. That day was around Christmas time, and my aunt said the same thing happened to her, and she just thought that it was a Christmas angel visiting. My mom said the same thing, so it probably was. Hmm. I've experienced a lot more stories, but I'm going to tell them all one at a time so you don't get confused. Well, that's good. Thanks. Thanks. Well, um, you know, so I'm sorry. Was it dressed in white, did she say? Did they say it was dressed it in was white? It was white. So it was it like was a, a luminescent <clears throat> kind of being is oh, what it sounds okay. like. I don't okay. know. Like a, whether it's a white cloudy mass or if it was actually glowing, I don't know. But yeah. Hmm. Some kind of white figure, but it was obviously not the script enough to de- to decide if it was a, a male or female type of spirit huh. or whatever it identifies as. Well, <laughs> they, the person said it was a Sorry, new that was house. Sorry, hilarious so in was... my head. Oh, my. <laughs> oh, gosh. Sorry. Yeah, it was a new house. but uh, so, so, you know, I was wondering if there's not been time for people to die in the house, you know, then it must be something connected to the land. Well, not necessarily. I mean, there's there's the idea that... Oh, well, the transient ghost. Our, our trend... Our tra- our, our, Traditional thinking says that a house has to have some kind of trauma in order to be haunted, and that's, well, that's true. really not true. I mean, something may take up residence there that has nothing to do with it, and uh, it could be just something of that space that reminds them of something that they liked in life, or maybe they were never human. You know, there's lots right. of, of beings that were never human. Maybe it's a person's energy, too, because we talk about people having attachments and, and you know, mm-hmm. people... You know, things attaching to the person themselves. So, you know, maybe, but she said, whoever that was, they said that it was not, uh, I don't know what the preferred pronoun is. They said that um, it's never been seen since. So, right. you know, maybe it's not an attachment. Maybe it's just one of your transient ghosts. Yeah. You know, that, uh, oh, the portal opened here, you know. <laughs> here, pick a door, any door. I choose I this one. Oh, look, it's a bedroom. Hey, yeah, it's like Monster Zinc. <laughs> exactly. Hey, I was yeah. thinking. I was thinking about. I was thinking about that too. Boo, boo. Where'd you go? There's just this whole network of oh doors they just try. <laughs> yeah. Let's see what's behind door three ninety two. Yeah, exactly. It could wow. be. You never know. I mean, it wouldn't it be silly if that was the case, right? It would be kind of crazy. Yeah. But I, I just think that that they are, there are some just earthbound things, and they and they don't necessarily need to have become attached to a place for any other reason. Than, right, right. I mean, sometimes I, it may just be that it's available, that it's there, and they like the vibe of it, or they just like the energy of the people living there. Right, right. And so they just hang out, and that can be good or bad. You know? <laughs> like a stray puppy. Right. Well, no, I mean, like the energy, uh, liking the energy of the people could be that, hey, that reminds me of my family. I feel right, comfortable right, here. Right. Or it could mean, hey, I like their energy. I'd like to feed on them. <laughs> you know, Like so. a puppy. <laughs> How many puppies feed on people? Well, the idea is, is they feed me. Oh, they feed you? Oh. <laughs> the puppy! <laughs> oh, my God. I think we got a yes. little peek into I'm the sure. basement, me. If, if, if you feed me, I'll stay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's not creepy or anything. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Oh, no. But, yeah, I mean, it is it is a little bizarre. I don't know. You know, it's just that thing. I, I wish, I, I really would love if it were possible 
to develop the ability to create a set of goggles you could put on right. and just see what's going on in this in this hidden world to see what the hell are they doing? You well, know, what's stones. going on? Hagstones. Hagstones. Yeah. You know, if you find a hagstone, you're supposed to be able to look through it and I've and tried. See it. I've oh, tried that's... many times in my yes, you've got I can't, around your neck. Yeah. I can't see anything with my hagstone. Really? Yeah. Well, and it's... ladies and gentlemen, look up hagstones. They're supposed to be uh, incredibly uh, powerful, not only for warding, warding off evil, but they're supposed to give you an uh, an eye into either the fey realm or the spirit realm or maybe both. I don't know. Hmm. So, but uh, yeah, I, I found this one on the, the beach back in Minnesota, along with many other rocks, including the ancient mallet, Indian mallet. Head. Oh, yeah, that thing's yep. awesome. Yeah, that is a real cool one. And He's got some really cool artifacts. Yeah, and that's, <laughs> yeah just a couple. Yeah, a couple. Yeah, yeah. but they're cool, you know? Well, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. But yeah, hagstones are, are a great um, talisman anyway. I, and I, I do like wearing it. I feel. <gasps> oh, that's a great idea. What? Oh, for my for the Etsy store. Oh, Hagstones? Yeah. Yeah, actually. That would be great. I'm sure there's already people doing it, but you know, it's it's all about the energy of an object, you know. So if you had Hagstones and you, you know, you said that they were charged because you had them, you know, charged with with positive energy sitting out in the moonlight. Right. Yeah, of course, moonlight would be great and even sunlight is good for charging objects, so. Mm-hmm. Yep. So that is <coughs> that, but I don't know. Ooh. I figure that most of them come pre-charged because if you're finding them on a beach, they're already exposed to sunlight and, and moonlight, you know, until they're found. So they've had a lot of charging, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. you would think so. And the power, and and the energy of the ocean, if you find it on, because they're mostly found around water, yes. because you know, um, because of the the texture and and the wear of it, you know. Mm-hmm. So you know, you'd think the energy of the water would charge it up too because there's right. a lot of energy well there is that i mean it's uh, yeah. it's elementally charged for sure but you know the thing is is mine is granite which is what no oh, that's bizarre. weird right yeah uh, granite it doesn't just wear holes in well it. that's why i thought it was really unique it's it's like a granite so it's it's not just a, i can hear you tapping that yeah <laughs> it's real it's real so and it looks like a bird skull i'm gonna see if i can hold it up so oh wait a minute hold on Let's see if I can yeah, hold it you, up. Sh- you shouldn't take that off. I'll take that off. I, 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 I take it off from time oh, to time. Oh, gracious. It's nothing big. Ow. I'm looking at the, the ghost oh. app. <laughs> What's going to happen? <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm still holding it, so I don't know if it can be seen. Let me get the camera so I can see if it's visible. All right. Hold on, ladies and gentlemen. I'm showing you my hagstone. And, and this is what a hagstone is. And they can look like a lot of different things. But if you can see it... It's got a cool shape to it, but there's a circle that's worn into it, and one side is is more rounded than the other. This side is really flat, but how it was formed, I don't know. But I've got it a cord tied around it. Oh, it and does look like a, a bird. Yeah, skull, it looks like yeah. a bird skull, right? Like this would yeah. be the beak right. here, and this is the rounded back end of it. Yeah, it's just got like a. I don't know, some kind of strange. It's, it, uh, Julia, it's Hagstone, H A G. I'm trying to pair it as you can see it better that way if it's against my arm. The whiteness of my skin. Ooh. You see it? Yeah, you can Is see it? the whole yeah. 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 So that's my Hagstone. I found it back in Minnesota. But I, I got to tell you, you know, and maybe it's perhaps just because I believe that there's something to right. it. But it is. It does feel like it's got an energy to it. Right. So between that and my dragon. Those are the things I wear. So, glimpses into Brent and his <laughs> cool artifacts. For, for whatever that's worth, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, they're cool. I mean, you know, it's like, you know, living in the flatlands, you know, and finding, you know, arrowheads and, and stuff like that, you know, <laughs> where they're where available. <laughs> you know, I mean, the, the coolest thing I ever found was a clue, and it wasn't that great of a clue. <laughs> uh-huh. So, you know, whatever. I was just looking at, at the chat oh, yeah. oh. to see what people are saying. Now they're talking about bison recipes now. <laughs> oh, you know, we could probably change the format to food. Yeah, the paranormal food channel. <laughs> paranormal food. You can expel those demons later. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. That's awesome. Oh, man. Food. So anyhow, oh, I've got a story. I've got a story. Please go got, ahead. Yeah, I've got a great story. This is a well, great story. Well, please read your great story. Okay, so, um, um, 
I'm going to change names for, you know, the protection of the people. Um, I'm just going to say my hubby and I had been wanting to go to a natural water slide for years. We finally planned the trip in late August of 2017. We left home pretty early for the three-hour drive, rechecking directions to make sure that we knew where we were going. It was of no use because we took a road too early and ended up driving around roads that our car was not meant for. If only we had turned around and gone home. After about an hour of five miles an hour terrible mountain roads, we turned around and about halfway down we ran into a truck who was lost as well. We relayed that this was not the way to uh, uh, Lion's Head and that they would, and they would follow us out until we found the right road. We never saw the people in the car behind us again. Not thinking anything of it, we checked our packs, loaded up all of our stuff, and started the short, easy hike to the granite water slides. It was some of the most beautiful scenery I'd ever seen. We didn't stop hiking until we got to the water slides because the temperature was dropping. After years of anticipation, we were ready. We strapped plastic garbage bags on like diapers and slid down the granite on our butts. It was invigorating, and I definitely recommend it. But it's not why I'm telling you the story. The shade was settling in and I was starting to shake from the cold, so we decided to find a place to camp for the night. My hubby and I hiked up another mile along a trail that wasn't much of a trail going back and forth across the river. We found a perfect spot with a breathtaking view at the top of the waterfall. uh, My hubby started building a shelter because we had not wanted to pack a tent in for just one night. We sat on top of the waterfall and ate dinner and enjoyed spectacular views. We were both overwhelmed with feelings of gratitude and serenity as we sat there in silence watching birds and insects fly around the water. We decided to go to sleep early so we could get up with the sun and start exploring before people started coming up for the day. There were so many granite pools, slides, and beautiful sights to explore. Around 8, we laid our heads down in a very secure and comfy shelter that my hubby had made out of pine boughs and parachute cord. We had one opening to our feet, and the other three sides were completely covered with pine needles. It wasn't long before we were snoozing away, awaiting tomorrow's adventures. A few minutes after midnight, we both woke up to a snapping branch right outside the shelter above my head. It Mm -hmm. still gives me goosebumps thinking about that snap. I felt my hubby move and asked, Baby, did you hear that? And before my hubby can answer, I was pulled by my hair to the corner of the shelter, screaming out in confusion and terror, and I felt my hubby's arms pull me back towards him. I could feel his arms sliding around the side of my body for what had pulled, from what had pulled me away. All of a sudden, something, but, not, but nothing, was on top of us. Hubby's head was being pushed into the ground, and my face and chest were being slapped by invisible hands. There was no skin, no fur, nothing but chaotic energy and heavy force on top of our bodies. I screamed at my hubby, What's happening? He yelled back, Where's the gun? I couldn't answer. My mind was reeling and I was convinced I was going to die. He yelled it again, Where's the gun? And everything stopped. Everything was silent except our heavy breathing, our hands searching for the gun and the flashlight somewhere above our heads. I think I had started to cry by the time My fingers felt the small lantern, and I just knew that the shelter was going to be completely destroyed. I turned the light on, and to our absurd disbelief, the shelter was completely intact. Not a branch had been moved, and we were staying, we were staying, we were still totally surrounded by all three sides by branches. The most terrifying thing I've ever done in my life was crawl out of that shelter, not knowing what was waiting for us on the other side. Mm. Some creep. Some creep with a bigger gun, a pissed off grizzly bear loaded up, loading up on food for the winter. There was nothing but darkness. By this time, we both had lights, and for what felt like hours, we kind of stumbled around, shining the light around this completely unfamiliar darkness. There were no tracks or footprints in the dirt. Nothing had been disturbed in our campsite. No sinister-looking evil men or glowing, floating animations. Hubby kept asking me if... There were marks on his face. I couldn't see any, but he swore he felt where whatever had pushed him down on his face had left marks. Uh, Hubby kept the light on in the darkness while I packed the camp as fast as I could. Nothing could have kept us here. I threw everything into our packs and we put them on. Now we both have lights on and every few minutes swung around behind us to make sure nothing was following us. And after what seemed like an eternity, we made it back to our car. 
on the way home, I've never in my life been happier to see the city lights, gas station, and people. <laughs> bet. I Google searched if there had been any earthquakes while we were up there, but nothing had been reported. We talk about our separate experiences the entire way home, trying to make sense of it all. There was no sense to be made. Was there some weirdo up in there, up there messing with people who camped overnight? <clears throat> was it some animal? How come we never felt anything besides pressure and ferocity? Could both of us have shared a nightmare? Nothing made sense to this day. That is the scariest part. We didn't camp out for the rest of the summer, and I didn't go outside <laughs> in the dark for at least two months by myself. Yeah. It was heartbreaking for me to think that my life would forever be different every time I spent the night in the woods now. I used to be so brave in the forest, I never real I and I never even realized it. I felt it felt like home to me and in one night it had changed to something dark and unknowing. Wow. That's Crazy. That is, but it sounds like a Bigfoot kind of thing, doesn't it? Well, yeah, but there was but nothing. There's nothing, there's nothing amiss. The, the, the lean-to, the shelter was intact. Yeah. You know, nothing was broken. There was no footprints or disturb, uh, disturbed things in their campsite. Just this evil presence. Huh. Well. Crazy. Yeah. That is crazy. That's and and creepy, crazy. Yeah, creepy, creepy, creepy is the worst part. Of it. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> why they would look for earthquakes if they got dragged around with their hair? I don't, <laughs> yeah, I don't yeah. understand that well, correlation. You know, I, well, they, you know, <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, the mind when it can't explain things, grasps grasps for whatever they can know, whatever whatever for things that they know, mm -hmm. you know. So, um, yeah, but I mean, I guess an earthquake could like you know, move you around, but I can't see it shoving your face into the ground and <laughs> pulling you by your hair, pulling you by your hair. Yeah, yeah. That's the part that's, you know, I mean, mm. you can't, I, I know people will grasp at anything that right. makes some kind of sense, even if it makes absolutely no sense. At that point, you're just struggling to find logic in what would appear to be madness, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know? So, yeah. I mean, that makes sense to me. It's just, um, even though, even though you still have to you know, go, well, earthquakes can't grab me by the hair. That's not going to work, <laughs> you know. So I don't know. But a uh, very cool story. Anyway, I was thinking about these glasses, and what I don't like is that they kind of reflect everything back. Yeah, I understand. You know? I actually I brought my glasses tonight. They're out in the pickup. You must look smart. Yeah, I look smart. Well, I bet you look so smart. I'm suave. <laughs> I put them on, and I turned into Rico suave. <laughs> not Rico Hacksaw. <laughs> or, or, or Ricky Schwabe. Ricky Swanson, maybe. <laughs> Ricky Swanson. I knew him in elementary school. Ah, <laughs> uh, I'm just saying. <laughs> Who wow. knows, ladies and gentlemen? It is all about the portal here. Oh, but goodness. we're moving through the night at a really nice clip. This is a nice leisurely pace. I like it. I like it. I hope you like it too. Won't you be Jim Neighbors? <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea where that came from. <laughs> wow! <laughs> Holy random! Dude. I know. What the uh, hell's going what, on? Up there? You know, like what is it called? A uh, uh, <laughs> association? What? <laughs> I don't know what they call that, Don. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, random oh. associations. Yes. <laughs> okay. All right. I don't know. I'm as confused as you are, guys. <laughs> well, we love him anyway. He keeps things fresh and interesting. So we got that going for us. Oh, just so you know, that story actually came from up here in North Idaho. Oh, did it really? Yeah. 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 Wow. Yeah. yeah. Lion's Head is uh, here in North Idaho. Is it how far away? Uh, it's far away. Like I would, I actually, like I only at, know it's up here. Let me, let me look. Is it as north as us, or not quite as north? Well, yeah, because that was actually from like Priest River. Oh, what? so Priest oh. River's north. They camped um, in Priest River. That's where they were. From. Oh, where they're from? Okay, Lions Head Campground, Lions Head, Idaho. And let's see what Mister Doctor Google brings up here. Um, Lion Heads Creek Trail is in Bonner, Surrey. So it's right oh, up the road. It's, it's right up, yeah, right, yeah, up, the right up the road. Yeah. That's not too far away. Well, well, you know what? You know where I'm not going. <laughs> they have earthquakes up there. <laughs> right. Well, they have. 
Not only normal earthquakes, they'll drag you around by your hair earthquakes. <laughs> Shove your face in the dirt earthquakes. <laughs> uh, some mine serious has freaking com- earthquakes. Uh, comprised of two massive granite summits. Um, a, lies on a drainage. Okay. Apparently, there's um, natural granite water slides there. That's why they went up there. So. Oh, is there really? There's water slides up there? Apparently so. Well, you know, wow. yeah, natural water slides, yeah, waterfalls. Right, well, yeah. It was, yeah. I mean, it wasn't Don't a theme park. Don't go but... chasing water. Sorry. <laughs> what <the hell? laughs> when are you going to get some uh, some deliberate uh, association going instead of just random? <laughs> oh, I'm trying to get this stupid ad to go away so I can read more, but I can't. Okay, anyhow, well, anyhow, it is in Bonner's Ferry, which is actually okay. about 35 miles north of us. Yeah, that's not too far. Okay, it was a hot June at my grandparents' house and really boring. I desperately needed something to do, and it was such a joy staying with old people. Wow, that's a condescending <laughs> nice, as thanks. hell. Yeah. Wow, what a dork. All right, so uh, the town she lives in isn't that big. It's it's called Kermit. Hi, her Kermit for <laughs> <laughs> I really didn't think anything cool was going to happen that summer, and I gave up all hope of any kind of fun or excitement. Uh, it was just, uh, it was late at night, and I decided to sleep in the last room in the back of the house with my little sister. She woke up saying she heard noises, but I didn't pay any attention to her and went back to bed. Whoever listens to their younger siblings, uh, I woke up. Uh, Went back to bed, whoever listens to their younger sister. Oh, it means whoever listens to their younger siblings. Okay, I got, the, I got the intonation now. I woke up a little later and saw a figure of a person standing by my bedroom door. I just, it just kept looking at me and was probably standing there all night. I even kept covering my head thinking it would go away. A childish, t- childish act, I know. At least it helped a little bit. Then my sister woke up and said, Who is standing by the bed? The shadow just moved from the door to the bed. When it was morning, I told my grandma what had happened, but she wouldn't listen. I felt so ignored. (laughs) So when night came, my sister and I decided to sleep in the living room with my brother. At least if the ghosts attack us, we have an older brother to help us. Or sacrifice himself, whatever came first. (laughs) That's cute. We went to sleep and kept on hearing heavy footsteps. Then all of a sudden, I saw glowing green eyes. It was impossible for it to come from a car. Besides, my grandma's block is really dark. And this time, my brother saw something creepy. He saw someone peeking through the window and immediately shouted, There's a ghost looking in on us. He jumped up, turned on the light, and nothing was there. I sighed. Half of me wanted to push him towards the ghost, then scream my head off while running away. <laughs> but, but then my mom would have killed me. And we, we would never really know the secrets to those shadows. But to this day, I won't go back to my grandma's. My parents forced me to go, though. But they, have, but they haven't seen the things that I've seen. Huh. Yeah, that's weird. I don't know. <laughs> it's hard to know. Um, maybe grandma sleeps real heavy and never hears any of this stuff. But there again, you're dealing with paradigms. Paradigms, paradigms. All right, next one. Did you have any more you wanted to read? By no, the way? I, I, I blew my best story right there. <laughs> it's just, <laughs> why do you do this to me? <laughs> what? <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> oh. oh, Brent, 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 Brent. It was a warm summer night in mid-July, and my cousin and I lay snuggled in bed together. <laughs> really? Don, come on. Oh, no. The crickets were cha- ch- were chanting? It says they were chanting. <laughs> go, go, go. go. Yeah. Oh, money, pod, me, oh, my. I don't know what kind of crickets they got, but pretty spiritual crickets. <laughs> uh, whatever. I don't know. We get all punchy on the portal, ladies and gentlemen. When Don and I get back together. It oh, always... that's what we need is portal punch. <laughs> Oh my God. <laughs> Portal punch. Okay. We'll put our intoxicologist on that. <laughs> okay, Captain Random. <laughs> um, uh, come on, I lost my spot. Chanting bugs. There we are. I saw the lightning bugs flashing through the air as I lay quietly gazing out of the window into the d- darkness. Suddenly, as I was absorbing the tranquility, I heard footsteps walking in the loft. 
These steps were creepy. They sounded mysterious. And while I silently observed each step, gradually the walking stopped, and I fell asleep. The next morning, my cousin and I played with our dolls, and I told her about the footsteps in the loft, and she told me that she heard it before, and that she always tries to fall asleep before they manifest themselves. And so we determined that that night we would stay awake, and we would both peep to see who or what it was that walked in the loft during the late hours of the night. A few hours before daybreak, the night became a night that we would remember for many years to come as we giggled gently under the sheet we watched and waited for the footsteps to appear finally around 2 a.m the creepy footsteps started strolling through the loft i pinched her and she pinched me back and as we lay there lifelessly lifeless listening to the steps as they moved closer to us then stopped above our heads I stared through the covers but didn't see anything, and my cousin saw a figure of an aged man standing near the window. She told me when we rose the next morning. Whether some people believe it or not, ghosts have been known to exist, (laughs) and spirits may even be all around us. Many people don't believe in ghosts because they have never had an encounter with one, but there were a lot of others who have witnessed these episodes, and we know that they really do or have at some point existed. Hmm. Well, it's a cute story. I don't know. Just cute, yes. It could very much be residual, though. I mean, uh, uh, something like that, again, that clockwork, 2 a.m. kind of thing. Right, right. That's, that's more residual in, in my estimation, and it doesn't ever have any interaction with them other than making sound and seeing an apparition. So <clears throat> could just be an app or, uh, a residual imprint. Hmm. So possibly, anyway. So, that's all I got to share about that one. You have anything to add, Don? <laughs> anything about the story no. I should add? Well, that, that story was pretty <laughs> risque to begin with. Oh, <laughs> so, let's just leave it these there. These are kids. Oh, yes, kids. Uh-huh. All right. So, so, yeah, let's go on with that. Let's move along, shall we? All right. I live in San Francisco in an old section of town in a relatively new condo built in 1989. My husband bought home a charm at Christmas time, 1995, that a friend who was... Wait, I read this one. This is... I read this one the other night. Yeah, it's the Black Magic charm. That's horrible. Oh. Yeah. Well, now I got to go back and listen to it. Well, yeah, you should be listening to these anyway, being (laughs) part of the show and all. (laughs) Just saying, Don, you know, you might want to listen to some of these. Want to do some job security there, you mean? (laughs) It might help. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, we were talking about that earlier, weren't we? (laughs) Yes, we were. All right, so let's see. I I might as well read this one. I'm having to pull up more. Yeah, I forgot to close that one. I don't know why I left it open. All right. This one is, I just moved into a new house, and it was a swimming pool. It has a swimming pool, and my brother and I were swimming, and I looked away and saw a little boy run by. I only have nieces, and I didn't tell anyone. Then about two weeks later, uh, two of my friends came over, and one of them was very sensitive to spirits and such, and both of them said they saw a little boy run by. Then we went into this little shack in my backyard, and we were looking around, and there's a microwave in, in with no power going to it, and it started making noise, and then we heard a scream that sounded like a little boy. I've tried talking to him, but he won't respond. He seems sad whenever he's near me, and I just want to help. There was this other time when I was at my sister's house, and I woke up early to do my homework, and when I was done, I had time to sleep, and when it was time to wake up, I couldn't. And there was a dark thing over me, and I felt it go th- go in me. And I thought that it was taking me over for a minute, but time stood still, and I went somewhere else, but I don't know where. And after that, almost every morning, I could feel it. I never saw it after that, though. Hmm. I don't know. That's, uh, I suppose. <laughs> oh, dear. I'm not reading that one. See that one, Don? Uh-uh. See it now? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> no, not this time. I don't think not so. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. 
I'm not reading that. I'm going to take a There'll bath. be no naked men stories <laughs> on the portal. <laughs> you might as well just read it. <laughs> yeah, I, I suppose I will. What the hell? <laughs> All right. Because, you know, Pixie's <clears throat> going, oh, you got to read that one. <laughs> this one goes out to all the ladies. <laughs> Pay attention, ladies. <laughs> Leisure shit. Want to hear it? Yeah, Here it go. <laughs> A few days back, I came to know. Uh, come on. I want to share my horrifying experience uh, that was experienced by me at my grandfather's place three years ago. I'm reading it all sexy for you guys, too. <laughs> because it's time for bed. No, it's not. <laughs> and he advised me to share this incident so that the whole world will come to know about it. This incident took place nearly three years ago, in the mid-April, as my exams were over, so the whole family decided to visit grandparents' place. My grandparents live in a small village behind about 200 kilometers from Gwailor in the heart of India. Uh, it's in the Mudia Pradesh. It is surrounded by a thick forest area on one side and the other side by a dangerous lake famously known as Chambal. I love to visit this marvelous place again and again. Oh my God, how long do I got to keep doing this? I'm just looking at how long the story is. I love to visit this site again. I can't do it. All right, until the incident <laughs> took place, me and the neighbors at my native uh, and at my native place, love to ride bike and love to visit the nearby places driving on bike. That day was not a normal day. Me and my friend Ankush, as usual, were riding to a nearby place known as Raja Kakwila. I got to be careful there, <laughs> which stands for Fort of the King. It's a beautiful place with all the beautiful carvings on it, and which one could easily ad admist. admist? Uh, could easily admit? I don't know. Could e could the get beef. easily admissed upon it. The beauty of the fort was so mesmerizing that by six thirty p.m. we were the only we were the only which was not right. According to what the hell am I reading? <laughs> about naked men running? Not yet. Oh, it's okay. just a, it's just about this this um, uh, reading pattern is so bad here. Um, the, according to the villagers and we. We, the young blood, always ignored them. So apparently they were warned by the, the elders and they ignored them. As we were not believing in either ghosts or the paranormal activities, so we decided to stay at that place until 9 p.m., which proved to be the biggest and most horrifying experience of my life, which turned my life upside down and which still freezes me. Uh, after 9, we hardly saw any changes, so we decided to turn back to home as we were traveling through the forest. I don't know what happened. Uh, my bike suddenly stopped, and even after hundreds of attempts to make it, uh, made by my friend and, and me, it was not starting. So we decided to park the bike, and we start walking around as it is only five kilometers to get back home. And to pass the time, we started chatting about the villagers, uh, that they are such uh, a noob to believe on such th silly things but nearly half the distance was passed, a horribly crying voice was heard by Ankush. And he was asking, did you hear anything? And I was like, stop trying to kid me. And walk as fast as it was nearly 11 at night. And after two to three times yelling, uh, yelling on him, it's really bad English here, so uh, we started walking, but sometime a low whispered voice uh, walked through my walk through my ears, um, say, Ayut Jau, Kata, Katra, Katra, get back, danger, danger. But I thought it was just an illusion in my mind, so I ignored the voice, and after traveling some distance, Ankush and me heard the same noise again, and we had shivers down our spine, and we started running towards our home, but in the middle of un middle, Ankush fell down, and the noise was going very strong and gathering the full courage, I picked up Ankush and made him rest for a while. The noise was getting stronger and stronger as it was coming nearby, and we were exhausted by all. We were doing all that we could do um, by leaves and bushes and etc. After that, I saw a man was running naked with all the cuts on his body and yelling, Laut Jau Kutra Kutra. Seeing that scenario, which means go back, danger, danger, uh, seeing that scenario, our bodies started shivering, and by slowly, 
we started moving towards our house. By 3 in the morning, we reached the home, and we were shivering with fever more than 104 degrees. At home, we were all asking what happened. Oh, everybody was asking us what happened, but we were not in any shape to talk about anything. Uh, we couldn't speak. The next day, Grandfather came and asked us what happened, and we spoke about the, the story and started crying, and Grandfather wiped our tears and said that 200 years ago, the Shambal was home for Naxalites, and they used to plunder everything. And whoever refused, they used to torture them and make them run naked. The man you saw was the soul of one of those people who had been tortured by them. Oh, wow. This incident made me believe that ghosts do exist. So I was reading it and trying to assemble it because it's so broken. But I think I got the gist of it. So there you go, ladies. There's your naked man story. Don't say I didn't get you a gift. <laughs> <clears throat> Somebody said, Stro stroke the mic as you read that, Brent. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> and so I said to her. Oh, my goodness. I said, hey. <laughs> Sorry. What's your sign? <laughs> What's your sign? Six, six, six. Oh, <laughs> thank you. I'm here all night, ladies oh, and gentlemen. Oh my goodness, it's just a joke. <laughs> my sign is stop. <laughs> <laughs> oh. In the name of love. <laughs> oh. All right. It's portal Let's karaoke see. time. No, it's never that time, Don. <laughs> we are sing along with Don. <laughs> Go ahead, sing. No. What? Solo. <laughs> so low nobody can hear you all right, all right. you're I'll, back I'll, I'll try to stop okay please i don't think it's gonna work but i'll try <laughs> don's got portal tourettes <laughs> just, just okay so so just because pixie said it it was pixie that said stroke your mic <laughs> oh god thank you pix i uh i do my best to entertain that is one hell of a punch you made huh Hacker, he I said paranormal punch, so he he whipped up a batch and threw it on there, and he told me what was in it. Let me let me get to that real quick. There's a lot because he's like a bottle each of, oh, so wow. a bottle each of vodka, rum, tequila, peach schnapps, and blue. I don't even know how to say that word. Curico, I don't know. Anyhow, 128 ounces of white grape juice and 128 ounces of white peach cherry, cherry uh, cranberry juice. 128 ounces is one gallon. Five bottles of alcohol is one gallon. <laughs> one, two, three, over 10 pounds of ice. And Whoa. then he says strain. That's a hell of a lot of ice to strain. <laughs> I'd, be strain wow. I'd be straining trying to lift it. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's good. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I don't see the oh recipe, but I, I uh, definitely email it to us. Cause oh, it's right here. I got it. It's in my Facebook. <laughs> oh, it's in your Facebook. Okay. Yeah. He posted it on Facebook. I'm looking through the chat. I'm going, where is it's, this? It's blue. It's what? It's blue. Oh, it's blue color? Yeah. Ooh, I like it, brother. I like it. That's ah, cool. But the rum would kill me. Ah, it's not the rum that'll kill you. Oh, yes, it is. <laughs> it's the falling that kills you, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> the rum won't do it. <laughs> Oh, no. oh my God! Gracious! Okay. That does sound delicious, though. Um, okay. I well, you know, I love Long Island iced tea. For instance, I love those things. Now they are like rocket fuel disguised as uh, yeah. fruit punch. But oh my God, they are amazing. You mm -hmm. could drink. You can drink so stupid in a hurry. Really and truly, but I do love them. So if it's anything like that, I would definitely want to. I definitely want to try to make that concoction. What does the ice do? I mean, is that just to chill it? Well, chill it, and it does add some liquid after after the oh, fact. So it kind of dilutes it a bit. <laughs> like it depends on how long it takes you to strain it. <laughs> <laughs> Can you strain it? Strain it with your throat. <laughs> I strain it through my teeth like this. You just spit out chunks of ice. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what they say about chewing ice. I don't actually. What do they say now? Never mind. You don't want me to go there. <laughs> oh really? Oh, I frustration. Really... Oh. It's a sign of frustration. <laughs> he says, he says, Brent, you mix it in a five gallon Home Depot cooler. <laughs> I can, I, 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 you know, I'm, I'm, you know what I'm feeling? A beach party, a paranormal portal beach party oh, coming up my goodness. in the next year. That would not, be interesting. Not sure where it'll be, but, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's wonderful to have people, you know, all of you guys listening, but you're all from all over the place and 
And I keep thinking, how would we ever get together as a group? And I would love to do it because I think it would just be a riot. It would be a, a, such a good time. But I'm not sure of the logistics of it. It's like, how could we get everybody there? Yeah, no doubt. I don't know. It was like a yeah, paranormal weekend. <laughs> how would we do that? We have to have, have, to have MCAT rig up a big party barge for <laughs> us and, and drag us around. <laughs> the movie, the moving rave in the back of a fifty-three foot trailer. Let's do yeah, it. No kidding. It's that's like, not even. That's not enough room, though. Oh, I don't know. I, I probably not. But you know, mm. get the disco lights going. <laughs> you know, <laughs> could be fun. I'm just saying. Oh, I'm just throwing no. it out there. Wow. All right. No, I don't want to read another nightmare one. What? A- all right, let me look. I'm looking. Oh, here looks sounds like a, like a, um, a doppelganger one. Let's oh. see. Let's see. I'm Courtney. Hi, Courtney. Hi, Courtney. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to tell you all about a couple of my stories I've encountered, and one was when I was asleep in the living room chair. My little sister, little sister rather, not sister. My little sister is about 13 now, and she had a friend stay the night with her. They were outside getting ready to come in, and something made them stop and look up in the woods. When they stopped, they say that this girl that looked exactly like me, the girl, I guess, said that she wanted my sister and her friend to go up into the woods because the girl wanted to show them something. And my sister's friend said, no, we're not going up there because that does not like sound like Courtney. The girl got mad and started talking in a deep voice to the girls. <laughs> That's creepy. Get up here. <laughs> Get over no, here. wait, it does sound like my sister. Let's go. <laughs> Sorry, this humor. Um, <laughs> the girl got mad and started taking a, talking in a deep voice to the girls, and Kelsey ran into the house while Ellie followed her. And they came and woke me up and asked me why I was up in the woods, and I told them I wasn't. I was here the whole time. And what are you talking about? And they said that there was a figure exactly like me wanting them to go up in the woods for some odd reason and we all walked outside and it was gone to tell you the truth it was not me so i still have no idea what the figure was and why it looked like me if you have any ideas just tell me thanks for reading (laughs) so here's the thing um could it be a, a spiritual thing sure could it be like some pixie fairy weird thing sure (laughs) What? No offense, Pixie. (laughs) Oh, (laughs) our Pixie's a little different kind of weird, but we love her. (laughs) She's our kind of weird. (laughs) That's true. Um, But yeah, I mean, it's just like, what could do that? What would, you know, doppelganger stuff goes on a lot and it's, it's can be duplicitous and it can be harmless. I don't know. Well, you know, know, um, speaking of like (laughs) Pixies and things like that, let's talk about dryads. Um, Okay. You know, um, forest, you know, forest spirits, you know, sure. um, and if they are related to the Fae, which apparently they are, you know, In maybe the it was a, kingdom. Yeah. Well, okay. So, um, but, um, the point is, is, is fairies have glamour and maybe it was something because the person thought it was the sister. Maybe that's why they saw the image of the sister overlaid over this supposed entity. Right. So maybe that's what it was. Yeah, it could be. Uh, I don't know. You know, it's 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 creepy though to think. And and you think of all kinds of things. You think, you know, people describe encountering some of the weirdest stuff in the woods, and like crazy weird stuff. Yeah, true. I mean, there are books and books out there of people's encounters in the forests, and some of the stuff that people experience is just like, it's literally Twilight Zone kind of weird. Yeah. Strange, strange things. And so I always think of the Fae when I think of that. Right. Because of the glamour, because of the, you know, the confusion, because they can, you know, make you see and hear things that aren't necessarily there or not necessarily accurate to what they actually are. Mm -hmm. But then I think about other things, like what if it was some form of cryptid that has the ability Mm. to project mental impressions? I mean, you know, telepathy is is not unheard of. I mean, there's many... Many very, you know, very solid studies showing that telepathy does exist. Right. Um, um, for instance, there's a doctor who, who, who did a study and he had, he had his uh, patients sit in a chair, or, or just study subjects, sit in chairs. And he hooked all their, their heads up with electrodes and sensors. 
and he would then display different images, Mm -hmm. sometimes happy images, sometimes sad images, and they were just completely random. What he was able to measure was precognition in these in these subjects that they they began to react to the picture that they had not seen for a fraction of a second before it was actually revealed. Hmm. So if there was a horrible sad picture coming up, like you know just some you know something like a, a picture from you know any any war scene, you know they would flash it up. Before then, the people were already experiencing the horror of seeing that. Huh. And they could measure that. It- God, all the hair on my body just went up. <laughs> that is a creepy sound. I was like, <laughs> so what was it? It's, that was just a spirit, Don. Yeah, it apparently went and it right was, through me. Right. I mean, honestly, it was right because here, that, on the radar, it was right here. Because it, because literally, I still got chills. Don <laughs> just got spooked. <laughs> I got actually spooked by that too. I was Whoa. like, "What the hell is that?" <laughs> I mean, I wasn't ready for that sound Whoa. at all. But that's being startled, you know. I think that's see. There you go. We're not burning the frankincense incense. Well, you know, maybe you're right. Maybe that's what it was. Maybe that's when the, you know, <laughs> so it was like Jesus. What the hell was that? <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's the ghost detector. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> what were we talking about? We were just talking about predations. The predation, uh, great. Uh, I was. I'm being that's preyed was. upon. You are done. You but you know, you. It, it, it was. every it, when, when Just before I heard it, you know, the precognition. You precognition. Were just about, you know, it was like something, and then all of a sudden I heard that, and I jumped. It was crazy. Yeah. Wipe the ectoplasm off your shoulder. <laughs> yeah, Jim, good idea. Thanks. <laughs> oh yeah that oh was my God. that was a powerful one too dude yeah, that spiked all the way off the chart yeah whatever wow. that was 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 allegedly very powerful because it was first of all it was a bright red color on the radar but it, it's the wavelengths of it are off the chart yeah they clipped yeah it flatlined the chart completely wow wow yeah, it did <laughs> wow crazy but it didn't say anything so oh, gosh yeah. If it would have said something, I probably would have pooped myself. <laughs> I was just like, it was, you know, I'm getting it stereo into my head. So I was like, yeah. <laughs> what the hell is that? Oh, wow. Wow. Maybe I should turn down the volume on that. What do you think? <laughs> uh, that's not ectoplasm. Oh, no. Hacker. What? Goodness. Oh, you guys. <laughs> oh, oh. Hey, hey, hey. Family show. Oh, Thank right. Thank God they're in the chat. <laughs> yeah, well, the chat's also immortalized on the screen. so Yeah, just a small bit of it. Yeah, though. it'll roll by quickly. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I, I, that was... Uh, hey, uh, Stacy's here. She just missed Don getting that crap scared out of him. Stacy, Hi, Stacey. Did you, did you hear Don get, <laughs> get scared? I got startled, seriously. It, it didn't say anything, though. Um, it said nothing, so no, nothing came through the word generator. Just it picked up a presence. Now, ladies and gentlemen, how many times... Every time I'm doing the show, other than when we have a guest on, I have this running. So you can tell that this is not just some kind of weird random trigger kind of thing, that it's actually detecting something. What is that something? I don't know. And I can't pretend that it's oh. going to be a spirit, but it detected, detected some kind of serious flux in the atmosphere here. Yeah. So, and, and it was right, uh, according to the radar, God. here's where it appeared. Right here. Right. Right there. So here, here's the laptop. So it would have been probably right here, right in between us. So it might have moved through you, and that was the charge you felt. I mean, I'm just saying. I, I don't know. It might have come through the wall, through the ceiling. Well, I don't know where the hell it came from, but it was just there. And... I got nothing to say. <laughs> well, no, it, it just it, it was well, just crazy. That was a that was powerful. I mean, I actually felt that too, though. I mean, yeah, it sounds like you felt it a lot more than I did. So, well, yeah, but I mean, it's uh, we you know I've, we've heard that noise before, and I've never jumped like that. Yeah, that was I did have it pretty loud. <laughs> <laughs> Even the chat was like, "What the hell was that?" Oh, so, goodness. welcome to the portal, ladies and gentlemen. Time for an investigation. You know what happens, Lewis? Though you, the 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 belief is is if if you investigate you're actually promoting communication right and if you promote communication you're you're promoting something being there so I I don't necessarily want no. things hanging around my house I don't mind if they stop in a visit whatever <laughs> this but is a mop. I already have to deal with the things that are already here <laughs> and those are fine but um, you know I definitely don't want to encourage something 
to stick around. And so that's the risk of, of investigating your own home is that once you start EVP sessions, once you start, you know, doing, uh, you know, using EMF detectors or flashlights or, or voice boxes or spirit radios, then you are encouraging that communication. And, it, and it's basically a, a permission of sorts. So I don't ever grant permission. Yeah, it's, a, it's inferred permission. Right, exactly. So it's, it's, it's kind of, in my opinion, that's what it's doing. So um, I don't know. Again, I can't say that I believe wholeheartedly that this thing does uh, what it claims to do, but it does pick up something. Whew. It triggers off of something, and what that is, I don't really understand. And I assume that it's an EMF field of some kind. And if it is, then it's a transitory EMF field because it's not here all the time going right. off. Yeah, it just passes through dawn right. at odd times. Really, I mean, that's that would be what it would have to be. It would have to be some kind of transitory <sighs> EMF field, electromagnetic. It's actually an EM, EM field is the correct. Right. Uh, just for those of you out there who are paranormal enthusiasts, EMF actually stands for electromotive force in, in, in uh, electrical terms, but uh, EM, EM field is electromagnetic field. So you actually, uh, you know, when people are saying we're, we're getting EMFs readings and it's like, no, you're not. You're not measuring electromotive force. You're measuring an electromagnetic field. So it's an EM field, just as a trivia for what it's worth. <clears throat> but, yeah, something triggered. Very weird. Um, did I finish the story or no? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know either. <laughs> um, so the girl, oh, she got mad. Oh, no, yeah, oh, I did. Yeah, hi, Courtney, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, and that's always a great way to start. Yeah, hi, Courtney. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a great way to start. Hi, says, I'm Courtney. Hi, I'm Courtney. And, I, and, I, and I'm an apparition of... <laughs> <laughs> I saw a ghost once, you know, okay? Okay, okay. you don't need K. <laughs> oh, my God, I saw a ghost, okay? <laughs> All right, so now that we've started Don's heart, right? We started your heart? Uh, yeah. Okay. Kickstart my heart. <laughs> yeah, it's a kickstart my heart. <laughs> I like the way Miley Crew did better. Uh, yes, thank you. All right, I'm so. I'm somebody knows that song. Oh, I, I, I'm, I'm totally down with my 80s bands, Don. <laughs> Totally. It was that 90s. I, 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 no, that was 80s because yeah, that was, was one of their first albums. Um, I, I, I actually met Vince. That was kind of cool. Oh, did you really? Yeah, he was, he yeah. was at Spencer's in, in uh, downtown uh, Spokane. He had, just done a, he had just done a show. Oh. And where he did the show, they have an underground walkway so they can move people like that in and out of the hotel to the venue. Oh, cool. Uh, without any problems. But <laughs> he was up drinking in the bar that night. <laughs> like, hey, how you doing? <laughs> Did you hang out with him or just a uh, No, just walked over and, and, and said hi and uh, told him it was a good show and shook his hand. And that was pretty much. Oh, cool. You know. Yeah, Vince Neal, he's had a tough road, man. Yeah, losing yeah, his, his, losing his, his daughter. Child. Yeah. Yeah. It sounds like that was. That yeah. tore him up. Yeah. Well, that I think that would, that would be. Of all of the things in life. I know. Why would that I think be? burying your child would be. Mm the most humiliating, hurtful, painful thing possible. I don't rem I just can't imagine anything else that would that would hurt quite as much. Yeah. That would you be know? yeah. So I, I definitely my heart goes out to him even though, you know, it's like like we were talking last night, it's like time doesn't take away pain. It doesn't heal pain. It just lets you learn how to live with the scars. You know, and I'm sure that that's one he'll carry for the rest of his days. Yeah, no doubt. So, but hopefully one day they'll be reunited again. That'll be lovely. Nope. Huh? Nope. Nope what? I'm pretty sure they're not really. See, because um, Lords of uh, Lords of L.A., the yeah. album. Yeah. Um, they actually they actually did that via email and mail because, like, Vince was on one side of the States and the rest of the band was on the other side no, of the I, States. No, I meant his, uh, his child and him. Oh. Yeah, I don't mean Motley Crue. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. We are a paranormal <laughs> show, aren't we? <laughs> yeah. We do talk about those kinds of things. Yeah, but, uh, no, I'm sure there's lots of damage between them as band members. <laughs> but, yeah, that seems to be the, the killer for any band, is Do there? you know that Mick Mars is, like, almost 80? Really? Yeah, he was like 76. Okay, so this was uh, two years ago, their farewell. He yeah. was 76. So, yeah, he's almost 80. Wow. Guy's just rocking his butt off. Yeah, he's doing it right. <laughs> he's he's living the music all the way to the end. Good no for doubt. him. Kind of like the Rolling Stones. you know. Keith Richards. <laughs> they're basically shoe leather with guitars on them. 
<laughs> it's like, really? <laughs> oh man! So you're like, oh my god! They didn't need a lot of a lot of makeup on Keith for the pirates of the Caribbean appearance. <laughs> no doubt, yeah. <laughs> he's, he's already pretty pretty worked up. <laughs> he could have been on Davy Jones's. <laughs> yeah, he could have come out of Davy, Davy Jones' locker. Yeah. It looks like he's he's uh wow. He's lived a pretty tough life though. But he still turns out good music. Oh, man, there's no question. All right. <laughs> They're brilliant musicians. There's no question. And, and it's cool. They're still rocking. I think that's awesome. But Anyway, not like Kiss, who's just cashing in their old checks over and over. Yeah, no doubt. And not even with the full lineup. That's another problem. But anyway. Yeah, skip that problem. We know. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. All right. Sorry. <laughs> I, all right. So, oh, this one sounds good. Let's go with this one. Oh, gosh. I'm still not recovered. Oh, I know. It definitely it definitely still has that lingering feel to it. Yeah. Like, now you just don't know, Don. Now you don't know when the next time it's popping up is. But I find it interesting that, I, you know, I said no. I wanted not to burn the incense right, tonight. Right, yeah. Tonight you just said that, Just to see yeah. if, if that was pushing this stuff away. And it appears there might be something to that because I haven't burned it for many days now, so maybe those energies are starting to reappear again. <laughs> Don's like, let's torch that crap. Let's let go. Me, let me bring my diapers next time. <laughs> I guess it just all depends. <laughs> ba -dum -bum. All right. We got Safeway right around the corner. You're <laughs> That's fine. true, yeah. Safeway, <laughs> yeah. It's a safe way to do it. <laughs> ba -dum -bum. Oh, you're just sharper than hell tonight, aren't you? All right. Uh, me and my dad swear that this house is haunted. Of course, my mom won't have any any idea of it. My dad was asleep when he heard high heels walking across the room. I know it's true because I've heard them too. My dad thought it was my mom trying to scare him, and he waited until they got really close to him, and he felt cold. He turned around and was going to scare my mom, and he yelled, Rawr! <laughs> there was nobody there. <laughs> and a few nights later, we heard it again. Wow. He waited until it got really close, and he held real still. He felt cold again. And then the cover was pulled up around closer to his neck. Mm. He waited until the footsteps were a little further away, and he turned around, and there was nobody there. We see the curtains in the hall move all the time, and stuff fall during the middle of the night, whatever it is, and I don't think it's trying to hurt us. It must have been a mom, because it covers us up at night if we're cold or uncovered. If anybody has experienced stuff like this, please let me know. Wait a minute, wait a minute. A, covers them up. A, 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 a something comes in and pulls up the paranormal sheets for them. Right. That's this is this is a kind of cool haunt. This is the kind of cool presence that that'd be cool to have. It's like, oh you look cold. Let me get you all tucked in here. <laughs> yeah. I mean that's sweet, right? <laughs> that's too tight. <laughs> 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 I don't think that's the angle it's going for. I think it's just trying to be sweet and loving. But yeah. It wouldn't get near those paranormal portal with bed sheets. <laughs> yep, it'd be like stay away. Stay away. Right. So, yeah, strangeness. Very strangeness. But, um, yeah, I think that's sweet. I, I think that's a, a loving presence of some kind. And it could just be a grandparent just mm -hmm. sticking around, looking after the family. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't, have, it doesn't have to be some strange old woman that's just hanging out. Or, you know, it could be, I guess. But, you know, I don't know. It's kind of sweeter to think it's a family, right? Isn't it? Yeah, that'd be it'd be much better to think it was just a family member coming to visit. Right. So right. here's as the opposed to some creepy old man running down the road. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> so where do I begin? This is the first in a series of occurrences that have happened to me and my family, and we've moved uh, into a new house in Chippewa Falls, Wisconsin. Mm. Oh, that's right across the way Hello, from me. Hello, Wisconsin. Hello. Uh, the place seemed nice enough, and we hadn't heard anything in about about bad about its past. But one night, my family, my mom, dad, and I, were woken by the sound of my school lunchbox. The heavy plastic flip-top lidded ones violently falling down the stairway to our house. Hmm. We thought one of our two cats had knocked it down the staircase, except for the fact that they were both in my parents' bedroom sleeping hmm. with the bedroom door securely shut. My bedroom being upstairs was two rooms away from the staircase, and there was no possibility of my lunchbox crashing down on it. Plus, I remember specifically taking my lunchbox and set it, setting it next to my bed after school that day. And to top everything off, my bedroom door was shut as well. Mm. After six years, we still have never figured out how that lunchbox could have taken a tumble in the middle of the night 
but after a few more instances in the house, we truly believed that there was more than just us living there. I think you might be right. Yeah. I think so. Did you know Deb's going to be on this Friday? Um, I remember hearing something about yeah. that. Deb's coming on the show this Friday, ladies and gentlemen. Is it, is it that time of the month already? Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> um, for Deb. <laughs> oh, Jesus, God. <laughs> that is not what I meant, and you know it. <laughs> uh, uh, how, can, how can one... Uh, one person so consistently abused the English language. <laughs> I only have one language, and it's bad language. I, I speak two languages, good English or English and bad English, mostly just bad English. Yeah. Um, oh, my God. <laughs> Gemini says, Don, it's your time of the month. Apparently so. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of times of the month, Don's, oh, wow. uh, Don's in a heavy flow day. <laughs> so, oh! I'm going to take another drink just for that. <laughs> Just so you can spit it out. <laughs> Hold on. You've almost made me choke twice today. <laughs> well, you've made it pretty easy, I'm just saying. It's like the low-hanging fruit. It's like, okay. <laughs> oh, gracious. I don't know. But, yeah, it's uh, it's going to be Deb this Friday night, Excellent. everybody. So um, please put the word out that uh, if you or someone you know could use a little advice or a little insight, yeah, a little insight in into what yeah. is going on in their world, whether it be love, whether it be finances, a job or a situation uh, that they could use a little extra input on, definitely have them call into the show. And that'll be Friday at 7 p.m. Uh, here on YouTube, of course, as well as TFR, uh, TFR Live, iHeart, TuneIn, and TalkStream Live. So definitely will be a great time. Uh, it always is when Deb is on. But definitely get your calls in early as well. Because, and hold the line. Yeah, I know. It's hard for some people, though. And I, I don't know what the answer is there, but I mean, if, if I notice that somebody's calling from like Australia, <laughs> I might bump your head in the line just because I, you know, I, obviously that's a, uh, a huge thing to uh, hold the line for a long time, but generally it'll be answered come, you know, as they, as the calls come in, they will be answered in the same order. So we'll get to you as soon as we can, if you don't get to you right away. So, um, let's read this one that no, that's well, maybe. It sounds weird, but let's see what it is. It's a nice shorty. It's a shorty. Pixie, don't delete it. What? Whatever it was, just don't just leave it there. <laughs> it's, it's, leave it there for prosperity stakes. It's for, already immortalized yeah, on the stream anyway. So. so just leave it there. I think there's a ghost following my family. And ever since I was about seven or eight years old, I would get a weird feeling whenever I would walk into the bathroom. And this was in any place that my family lived. And I live in or visited. Whenever I would enter the bathroom, when the lights were off, I would hear the shower curtains ruffle, or I would see them sway. If by chance I walked by the bathroom and the curtains were open, I always saw what appeared to be a figure of a small female child playing in the bathtub. Now, no one else has ever noticed this but me, but when I turned 10, it stopped happening for about two years. Then it started happening again. And this time, I noticed that the lights would occasionally flicker, even when I'd be in the shower or tub, and the lights would flicker with no one else in the room. I'm now 22 and haven't experienced this in a while, but to this day, it still really freaks me out. Has anyone else heard of this happening? Or has anyone else had this happening? If so, please may, let me know what you think. Now, in a case like that, that could be something... Maybe some vision of a past life coming through too, hmm. you know that that's that could be a consideration, and I don't know why that came to me now, but I have a feeling that perhaps this isn't just some weird random ghost that's following this family hanging out in their bathtubs. <clears throat> I think it might have to do. This person says they see it and experience this no matter where they are if they go in a bathroom. So it is it is something to do specifically with this person, and I would suspect. Um, Either there's there's some, I would suspect it's a past life thing just kind of poking through. Like perhaps this person as a child died in a bathtub in a past life. Oh, you know? gotcha, right. Right. I was just thinking it was a paranormal portal party. Oh, no. Uh -uh. I mean, I, I really think that it's like something poking <laughs> that's an through. Yeah, that's an interesting idea. That person's past life 
they died in a bathtub. Is, and that's why uh, they experience that figure in the bathtub over uh, and over and over. Yeah. And they're the only ones that experience it. Nobody else is seeing this. So why, you know, why would a spirit follow someone just to jump in every bathtub they happen to walk by? <laughs> no. I mean, it doesn't, doesn't lend itself to reason, but the fact that that person is the only one that experiences it over and over and over in any bathroom would say that this is some kind of uh, uh, memory of theirs. Right, right. So um, that's just my two cents. But you guys can, you know, decide what you will. Anyway... I think, I think that's about the bell. You know what? You're right. It is. I it mean, is. look at that time. Goodness, time flies. Okay, so it started out great, um, you know, <laughs> nice and slow, even keeled, and then all of a sudden it just went. Because of. <sighs> yeah. Why do you got to do that? <laughs> why you got to remind me of that horror? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's fine. It's fine. Oh, it's, it was pretty creepy though it was it was, that, it was just how loud it was I didn't realize how loud that was until that came through I was like yuck, 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 yuck. Aye, 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 aye. I love that sound effect from the old Scooby Doo's yeah. <laughs> like what the hell is that I guess they used to make that sound effect with like a, a string in a can and they would just pull it slowly through the, the plastic really? lid and it would go aye, 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 like that yeah so Oh, gotcha. Right. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Wow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. All right. So, uh, Deb on Friday. Deb on Friday, ladies Deb and gentlemen, uh, here on the portal. Deb will be doing free readings to callers of the show. So, on Friday night, if you or you, someone you know needs guidance, needs a peek into what's coming up in 2019, this is your chance, and Deb does a wonderful job, and, and if you're not familiar with her, she is a, just a beautiful soul, just a wonderful, loving, kind person, and she just wants to help. So she's been volunteering her, her vision and her ability to our listeners for well over a year now, yeah. coming on about once a month and uh, just sharing what she, what she can do. Yep. And it's touched so many people, and it's actually made a huge difference in a lot of lives. Um, she's, and I've gotten the feedback from the listeners, so I know. But pretty incredible. And uh, she's the real deal. So definitely call in and, and uh, have your shot at it. But she's uh, just a wonderful soul, and I, and I know you'll enjoy it. But if you don't want to call in, just definitely come in and tune in because it's uh, a lot of fun to listen to as well. Yes, Lady Death, do call in. Come on. Yeah, please. Call in. Pixie, too. She may she may say she sounds like a drunken horse, but we've talked to worse. <laughs> oh no! It's just horrible. don't drink, Pixie. <laughs> Stop drinking, you wouldn't be drunk. You just sound like a horse, <laughs> Mister Mister Ed. <laughs> oh, we love you, Pixie. I guess, you know I guess that. that makes her Mister Miss Mrs Edna. <laughs> Ooh, Mrs Edna. All right, but we uh, we are absolutely oh, thrilled gracious. you guys are here. Oh, Rough Rider, that's a new name. Good to see you, Rough Rider. Thanks for coming in. I haven't seen you before, but I'm thrilled you're here. And uh, unless it's just a new name. I don't, I don't know what's going on. I don't know. If, <laughs> what? Nothing. Are you thinking of, pro, like, prophylactics or something, Ben? <laughs> are you really? <laughs> you are, aren't you? you? You're such a child. I love how you got around that. You used the 50-cent <laughs> word on that. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God! This poor guy's gonna go change his name now because. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it says he's new. Well, thanks for being here. Thank and, uh, you. We and I apologize it. for my co-host. <laughs> it's not his fault. I he was dropped as a child <laughs> several <laughs> he was, times. He was dropped on his head as a child. <laughs> but uh, we love you guys. So take oh, care. Gotcha. Be good. Okay. Be kind. Be nice. Take care of each other. <laughs> and I will be back tomorrow with the bedtime stories. And Don will be joining me again on Saturday. For more of the magic that is the portal. <laughs> <laughs> As he raises those eyebrows. You saw that? <laughs> kind of like, 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 you know, the, the air quotes. <laughs> more of the magic. The magic. Gosh. Sometimes oh I hate it when he's God. here. <laughs> oh, no. I love when you're here. You know I do. Do that voodoo you do. So <sighs> well, we do all the voodoo we know how to do. And uh, a lot of it's unintentional. Some of it comes <laughs> out poodoo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice, nice Jar Jar reference. <laughs> oh, All right. So anyhow, we said we said the goodbyes, didn't we? Love oh. you. Thank you for being here. All right. I guess Don's done. And so. Happy New Year. No, All right, that's guys. Next, that's Saturday. 
Next Saturday. Next That's Saturday. right. Oh, what? <clears throat> New Year's is Tuesday, right? Well, yeah, but next Saturday is our, our show. Yeah, before. yeah, you'll be back. And uh, we'll <laughs> see what we can get into next time. Yeah, so absolutely. take care, everybody. Have a great night. And uh, until tomorrow night, get ready for the bedtime stories because I'll be here to tuck you in. <laughs> Love you all. Night. Good night. Good night. Good night. <laughs> was, right. He's going to play in the mic now. <laughs> what? <laughs> Good night. Uh, microphone. Oh, Such no. a great story. <laughs> oh. <laughs>